You definitely can. Um, so there's been some research, hasn't there? There's been some research. So systematic review came out in 2010 uh, by Yamamoto and colleagues, and they, and they reviewed a bunch of literature uh, where people were looking at the effects of doing your cycling training and bringing resistance or strength training into it, or doing your cycling but like dropping a day or two off your normal cycling training or replacing it with gym. And whilst there were uh, a couple of studies that were like, hey, we, we uh, we got an effect and this worked really well. We got some good performance outcomes. Like any systematic review, there were some uh, mentioned where they're like, hey, we didn't get an effect in, in performance compared to if someone was just doing uh, endurance training. So that's what happens when you re review the literature as a whole. But Yamamoto and colleagues were still able to come to a conclusion. And they said, well, hey, you, it still actually works quite well. We have three studies here uh, that are all showing, hey, if we take out uh, one to two cycling sessions and replace it with you know some specific lower body training in the gym. One of those studies um, was actually doing like explosive stuff, like jumping with weights and single leg jumps and all stuff. It was actually quite an explosive session. But they said of these three studies, uh, they are showing that we can at the very least uh, like maintain cycling performance, but it actually improves some qualities of it with respect to like sprint power um, and I think time trial power as well. In one of them. Uh, I think it was time trial. So yes, to answer your question, it, it, the research is suggesting, hey, there are benefits to it. Now, the proviso there is those studies that are saying it is beneficial, you can get away with dropping a cycling session, replacing it with a gym, uh, they were finite. But, you know, they don't last for a cyclist's career. They sort of lasted over sort of six to 12 weeks. And they were showing benefit for that. What you would then need to look at, well, well long-term, if I did that for six, nine, 12 months, three years, will my cycling performance still be going upwards as if I was just doing cycling and not replacing it? That's the question I can't answer. Okay. But I would certainly be able to answer, hey, if I'm just going away every three weeks and I'm, I'm missing a couple of bike sessions, I'm going to replace them with gym and I'm going to come back to the bike. I, I, honestly, if, if someone came to me and asked that as a strength coach, look, I'd say, look, based on the research, you can do it over a prolonged period and it's quite beneficial, you know, up to six or 12 weeks. So you're just doing it for a week every two or three, four weeks, I think it's gonna be fine. Because if you're completely off the bike for a week and you replaced it with gym, will you get a little bit of fitness detriment potentially, but the weight training is gonna mitigate that, but at the same time, it's gonna help with the, the power qualities and the cycling economy and efficiency and keep your strength up during that period. So it's almost like the negatives of getting off the bike are canceled out for that week with the positives of the gym. Mm. So I think it would like come out in the wash. Yes. Now. Let's say you uh, inclement weather or you're away and you're like, hey, I miss one cycling session, but I could still do my other three or four sessions for the week. I have athletes all the time messaging me or they'll pop into the gym like, hey, Aaron, I'm, I'm here today. I know I don't normally come in on this day, but the weather sucks or I had a lot on. I couldn't get my bike ride in. So this is my gym session today. And when I'd normally do my gym session, that's going to be the bike session that I missed today. And that works be beautifully. Hmm. Um, for those athletes because they still factor in whether you know they have to sort of rearrange the recovery days a little bit so they're not compromised but um with respect to what they're doing but it still works really well and so those of you who are living in an area and we've got inclement weather today um if you didn't feel like jumping on say the, the trainer it might be like okay well maybe today's my gym session and then fingers crossed better weather i get on the bike so to our pilot uh scenario i would um have no qualms with that particular member uh, member athlete to using the gym as the adjunct training mode while they're unable to get onto their uh, bike as often as they can. Does the gym session need to look any different if it's consistent? Like if it's like every week or every second week you're away for four days um, and you're doing gym maybe twice in those four days to make up for lost cycling sessions, um, do, does the gym just maintain um, you know, its, its normal protocol or because you're missing a cycling session, should you incorporate more speed or velocity or something along those lines? Well, I would suggest because what, what, what we see from the benefits of resistance training in cyclists, okay, I mentioned earlier uh, in our conversation today um, about sprint power, it, it improves that, it improves cycling economy and efficiency um, that we've chatted in the past about. So with respect to where do those benefits come from, it's generally heavier stuff. So if, I was, if it was happening regularly, I'd make sure the sessions had some reasonable load to them, hmm. provided I was 
had enough aptitude and confidence in how I could move um, and had been doing gym long enough to warrant safely doing a heavy session. Yes. Okay, so it's sort of like that four to five repetition range for three to four sets uh, at about an 80% work rate. That would be my recommendation during the period because that's where we see those benefits uh, that I was chatting about. However, we can't discount the benefits I chatted about just purely off stability around the trunk and the hip musculature because we know that improves pedaling mechanics and uh, stops you, makes you more fatigue resistant um, through long riding um, so you don't get into those funny pedaling patterns which could cause injury and just simply reduce performance. So during that period, I would have a mixture if I was at the proficiency level where it was appropriate, where I would do my heavier training with some stability stuff. Yeah, okay. In the session, you would actually start with the stability stuff, then go to the heavy stuff. Yeah. Okay. If you were a beginner and you're like, okay, I'm on this fly in, fly out pattern, treat the gym session like I mentioned earlier. You're going in there, you're moving well, the weights are sort of light to moderate, you're just trying to become more proficient with the exercise technique. And then your bread and butter is then working through the stability stuff, the core stuff, get that strong core, strong stabilizers around the hip. And then with that, um, benefit whilst it may not help to the effect size of big changes in cycling economy efficiency that we see from the heavy stuff it would certainly still improve the, the pedaling mechanics under fatigable conditions which would mean you're more efficient mm -hmm.